Hey there, this is Alex with Gray Area. Welcome to our series Spotlight, where our mission is to build a bigger and more united house music community by sharing new and exciting artists, festivals, and event brands with you. In this interview, you hear from Juliet Fox, an Australian-born, Europe-based techno artist. We'll talk about her journey from Australia to the mecca of techno Berlin and how the move gave her the space to breathe artistically. We'll also discuss her new label, Trey Gamba, and how it allows her to express her many artistic talents. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more interviews just like this. Let's get right to it. Um, I always like to start with asking um, artists what um, what their musical background is like. What were your parents listening to when you were growing up? Um, musical background wise, they um, <laughs> I always laugh because they they grew up like record players, of course, but like listening to Boney M. Um, and then my dad's side was more like your like Pavarotti and like <laughs> classical kind of music. <laughs> it's right. a bit mixed. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely like a wide range of things to be listening to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, what yeah. did you, what do you feel like you started to develop your own musical taste? I think when I was um, around 11, 12, actually. And well, it probably came a little bit like earlier than that because I've got a couple of older sisters and um, I was listening to like, yeah, a lot of um, a lot of like you know what is it, girl bands kind of thing but through my sisters, right? <laughs> and then I started to get into more electronic music myself. Um, yeah, and I think yeah, around about the age twelve actually was when I really started to like more of like this, I guess like house and techno kind of sound, and developed from there. <laughs> what were some of the first things you were listening to, in that in the house and techno side of things? Um. The one that I like recall was like it was Beach Balls was um, the track. Yeah. And um, oh goodness, I mean it's so long ago now. I'm trying to remember what I'm listening to. <laughs> <laughs> and then actually, then I went into more hip hop, like with like Tupac and like Biggie, like you know. So it was like it was a very mixed kind of style. And from then, like then when I first started to say going out to clubs, um, right. it was a bit of both. So it was more like your progressive house and electronic music and then you've got your hip-hop so you know you can vary between either levels of the clubs <laughs> right um when did you decide you wanted to dj it was uh, probably around that time when i started going out maybe like 17 18 mm -hmm. and then going to house parties and i was you know really fascinated by like djs and trying to see what they're doing and then whenever i could like i would try and like like you know keep the other person off the house parties especially and like started using like tractor or whatever or serato i think it was sorry more so then um yeah and then i didn't like i didn't really progress for a while because it was really quite a new thing you know and it was i don't think like any females were even doing it so it was kind of like at the time you just thought it was like kind of a guy's job like <laughs> and i had a friend of mine and she started doing it and yeah, followed in her footsteps. So, so she's the one who taught, like, kind of taught you the ropes. Um, we like we learned separately, but it yeah. was just more like it was just a, more an influence to see. Yeah, and then for myself, then yeah, I just spoke to some friends and bought myself turntables, and that's kind of how I just started out and just mixing more just at home. It was never to do any do it, I should say, professionally, uh, more of a hobby, and then people start to hear that you're playing and then get booked <laughs> right? <laughs> for like friends parties. And then, yeah, it went from there. Nice. And when did you decide that you wanted to actually like make music? When did you make that transfer over? It was probably a little bit after I started playing, like maybe a good like three years or so afterwards. But um, it was probably then that I learned like that really people want to connect to you, not just because of your DJing, but also because of the music that you're making. And that's really like the next big step, I guess, is to be able to show your production skills or like, yeah, present the music that you're making. <laughs> right. And when you started producing, did you like have any background in making music before that? Did you, had you ever like picked up a DAW or had you ever like played an instrument previously or anything like that? No, I mean, I, I'd like tried to play the piano we had a piano at home right? and guitar. Like I'd also like, I think I learned it when I was like super young, um, but I never like actually like ended up 
you know practicing long enough to really like learn it and right. but it was always like music for me was always something I think like in there <laughs> like you know and um it took me a bit more like a bit longer I should say to try and like work out how to use like uh Ableton I started with but I started doing just like more music mashups and mixes in them right yeah and I like, kind of learned myself from there and was it always about techno when you when you first started producing or were you just kind of fiddling around in there? Um, actually, yeah, the first track I ever made was like a techno track, but then I started to go more into house music. Well, I would say a mixture of both. For me, it was like equally like my influence is like, you know, your Chicago house, Detroit techno. Right. That's where I was like really looking to. And then, yeah, I kind of went to more house Australia was where I grew up so right that was a lot more um like acceptable I should say is like you know that the jacking house kind of style came in a lot like and then I, I'm also played like deep house myself <laughs> interesting um, yeah <laughs> so so it seems like like you even when you first started producing you were always kind of doing something different from the people around you is that what prompted you to move to Berlin? Yeah, definitely. It was just then I was finding that I couldn't really truly play, you know, like what I wanted to um, in the clubs, like in Australia. And I originally then first moved over, like I spent my first summer in Ibiza. Right. Um, 11 years ago, actually. And then, you know, you've got like a broad range of music there. And then I went to like the UK for a while and then and then I was living in London and I still wasn't really quite able to play like I guess like techno that I wanted to and then did the trip over to Berlin and ended up staying for the last like five years or so. <laughs> for sure and um, I read in another interview that you said you thought you were playing hard when you came to Berlin but then you got there and you realized that <laughs> that you hadn't even touched the tip you weren't even like at the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Um, uh, what was it like? like getting used to getting used to being in a new city like that where techno is such like it's such a huge deal there it's like Berlin's like the center of techno in the world yeah it's amazing actually because it's like um yeah I mean like there, there was producers and artists that I've never even heard of like and and also the way I guess their production styles is completely different as well um you know like a lot more raw um, right this kind of yeah very like a warehouse style approach um, it was great for me. Like I just kind of went to every single club that I could like to experience <laughs> it all. And um, yeah, like, I don't know. It's just great for that, like the versatility of it all. I mean, it's, I think like it's changed up a little bit now. Like it's like, it's kind of good to see, you know, we've got a lot more focus on like the open airs and it's not just about like, you know, your Burgoyne techno, like really, really like hard industrial sounding. Right. Um, and I found though that the best thing you could do is just to like kind of just stay true to yourself and not trying to fit in, right. like trying to be like somebody else. Um, yeah, and I think that worked actually well more in my favor because then like you built up more of your reputation that way yourself and I managed to like, I guess like progress a little bit faster that way. What do you feel like you found that sound? Cause I, I, know, I know that's like something that takes a while to develop. Um, when do you feel like you like really establish yourself as like an artist or like, like who you are, who, how you can express yourself to your music? Um, I think it was definitely when I came to Berlin and um, even then though, it still took me like probably at least a couple of years to really like um, get to really understand myself and the direction that I wanted to go in. But it was like the best part of it, I should say. And what was important was that like the, there wasn't really like I didn't find any judgment like in Berlin or in Germany itself because you could play in clubs and there was no like cameras like you know there's no like as in phones or anything like that so I allowed myself to like yeah like really really get to know me and the right. style that I wanted to and I, but I, I would truly say it's only been even in the last like maybe two years that I really really think that I found my particular like music style for production what do yeah, you think? I don't know. It's always changing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think it's interesting that you talk about like not having phones and not having cameras constantly on you being such a freeing 
a freeing thing. Can you talk about that for a second? Like what's I honestly, I've been doing this for 20 years. So <laughs> I remember a time long, long ago where the only thing that was in the club was a was like a personal like disposable camera. Exactly. But I can't I can't honestly can't remember a time when someone didn't pull out their phone. Um, what's it like to to like <laughs> see a dance floor of people actually in the moment? It's so nice, honestly. And I think I say that about like I think one of the the best parts about Berlin is that it's just that there's no focus on that. Also no focus on what you look like because a lot of clubs don't even have mirrors in the toilets as well. Right. So you can just like <laughs> literally be yourself sweating like uh, whatever like you know and and yeah basically free like that's what it comes down to um it took me a while though to readjust though I must say because then I wasn't really say touring as much like when I first got to Berlin right and then when I went back to it and having cameras in my face I found it like really uncomfortable actually like and <laughs> I still am very awkward actually when it comes to having <laughs> People Your picture taken. Yeah, that. I can imagine. Um, some, people, like, some people seem so born natural, but also again, like I, yeah, you know, I started like what 13, 14 years ago, and as well, and I didn't grow up with that either. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, I always find when someone takes a picture of me DJing, I'm always making the worst face. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> like I'm making like well, well, doing something something super silly, right. and I'm like, how do I how do I even get around that? But it's like you said, <laughs> I never got used to having a camera in my face all the time. It's just. No. Very odd. I know. And then like, and I seem to be so uncoordinated. I mean, like, I, I'm like, I know the beat, but I'm like, I don't, I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the whole like hands in the air thing or anything. <laughs> well, that's just not you, right? No. But um, like, I mean, that doesn't matter so much. But like, yeah, I just, I found that was probably like the key for me like to really, um, yeah, like to understand music more as well. Because like, sometimes you just sit, like you're either texting or you're, you're interrupted by that or just you know not actually listening or feeling the music most yeah that it's yeah it sounds like it's really nice to be able to actually be in the moment on the dance floor or in the club Definitely. and and actually enjoy the music and this and what you're doing and not have to be like engrossed in something else all the time and be distracted <laughs> um how do you think you're going to cope with going back to the uk <laughs> and and having that whole culture change again I know it'll be interesting, but I think like it's something that I have to try and get used to again, like, you know, and because I'd kind of, yeah, like blocked it off a lot before. And and now with the way obviously things are in social media, like it is obviously really important to do right. this, present yourself in certain ways. So yeah, I'll just have to <laughs> try and well, ignore the fact that there's yeah, phone but, in my face. <laughs> well, consider considering the fact that you've said that, like, um, it's gotten to, it's taken some getting used to for you having the camera. How have you, how did you deal with like moving into a world where social media was such a, such a big deal and such a huge part of being a DJ and being a producer? Yeah, it's, it was actually really interesting, I think, because um, especially with all of like the lockdown situations and when COVID happened, it was nice actually, because I took like a few breaks actually from being on my phone um, where I didn't feel like it was necessary to be on there and like sometimes like, uh, you know, I'd maybe pick it up once in a week or something like that. Um, but then I, you know, going back into the beginning of this year, I've realized that it's actually, is, it is really important. So I can't be one of those people who's like, oh, I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to do this. I'm like, you have to, unfortunately, <laughs> otherwise. Right. And people do want to see what you're doing. And it's like, and then if you make it more fun and creative and like make sure that you're presenting yourself, like I think truly like yourself, then it's fine. And it can work then in your favor. And yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. And like, what else do you do besides music? Like, what's your what are your favorite things to do when you're not DJing or producing or thinking about techno? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I do love like sports in general and fitness. Uh, I'm probably not as as fanatic as what I used to be, but like, I would always love to get like out into nature as much as I can. Yeah. Um, I actually also love painting. Um, and that's something in which I want to try and find a bit more of a balance of, I think, actually, you can kind of just see, well, I'm pointing the wrong way. That's is that it? Is that yours? Yeah, that's it is, really, yeah. I love that. Yeah, and I used, um, actually, I started my own label just in December. Right. And what I'm now doing with it is um, using my own paintings as the artwork for each release. So I want to try and do a bit more, like, creative <laughs> outlets, you know, like... <laughs> mixing the two together 
that's a really great way to to like marry two things that you're really passionate about. Yeah. Um, I also you also do a lot of your own vocals. Um, yeah. <laughs> and like considering I considering now that I know that you you didn't have like a huge musical background before you started producing. Yeah. When did you decide to start like putting your own vocals into your music? Like how how did that happen? And where where does this like it seems like a natural inborn to, a knack for creating like an emotional space in your vocals? How how did that develop? Um actually like how it really started was I uh, I went and was working on a radio station before I actually went into DJing. Right. And that was also kind of by accident. I just met someone and they're like, they're looking for a co-host. They want a female. And they're like, you know, you might be good. But I was like super shy and nervous when I first went on there. But that, I think, really helped me to do, obviously, well, sorry, be able to like think quick and to speak more and to speak clearer. Right. And then I, when I started making music, I actually didn't like all these like sample vocals that I was always getting. And I'm like, maybe I can just try it myself (laughs) (laughs) and what then led to that was um I had met like um Curtis like Green Velvet right Um, he was a big influence for me um there's also like Jennifer Cardini I know like a few people were like obviously using their voices and and Green Velvet like actually one time was like we're at an after party and everything was like just record something like this like loop into my phone and he's like and they actually ended up using it for a track <laughs> a pretty incredible story of like but yeah like that then really encouraged me to like keep on going with it and yeah I would just I would record like wherever I was I guess like you know sometimes after gigs like in my hotel room or yeah like if I was just sitting like you know at home maybe more and more of a relaxed environment I found like it came to me a bit easier that way and Right. And maybe more naturally. <laughs> nice. And maybe I just like to talk and like sing a lot. <laughs> like, I can't sing, but like definitely like to like make up little songs. <laughs> it definitely works though. It, it like, it fits your style really well. Um, and I was actually going to ask you about that story about Green Velvet because I saw you mention it somewhere <laughs> in another interview, but you didn't go fully yeah. into the story. So I'm really happy that you told me that story. Yeah. Um, no, it was great. Because I mean, I love, I just love like, his songs you know like La La Land especially like it's just one and all my it's just when you can yeah you can make a song fun but um it doesn't have to be like too cheesy or quirky you know right yeah I've always loved that about him um all of his vocals like they're not nonsensical but they're like they're party vocals and it's like he's it's like spoken word and like he's telling a story but it's like always these most oddball things that he's talking about I'm like where did you come up with this man (laughs) <laughs> because you're like, I mean, sometimes whenever I've done it, I'm like, what would I be thinking if I was on dance floor? Probably high. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh. Or like, I'm like, you know, so you try and put in like subliminal messages kind of. A absolutely. Bit. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so it, speaking of going to Ibiza and like you talk a lot about travel, and I know that's something that's really important to you. Yeah. Um, first, I want to know, how did you cope with with the year without travel? Yeah, I mean. It was actually, it wasn't too bad, I think, because at that first I was like, this is great and I can just sleep and like yeah. kind of like <laughs> catch up on all like the, the, like the traveling time I was doing. And for me, though, I was quite fortunate because I had just finished like my first half of, well, it wasn't even first half, the first quarter of 2020 was already quite crazy. I started off playing in Vegas on New Year's Eve, flying oh, wow. from Oslo and then I went to Colombia and then... Um, had done some shows in Europe and then I went to tour in Australia, Asia and New Zealand. And so I, I literally like lockdown happened as soon as I flew back from Australia. So I wanted to actually just settle and, and I was like, this is great. I can just sit and I was moving into a new studio. I just want to make music. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been interesting, obviously, like I really want to travel now, but in to respect of what's been going on, I think that's just kind of calmed me down a bit so yeah <laughs> yeah do you, do you think you've like learned anything in this time that you'll take with you going forward like professionally or even personally yeah I mean definitely when it comes to even say traveling like some of the schedules that I was doing and I mostly like even encouraged it and tried to <laughs> fit as many like shows or stuff offs that I could but now I would definitely not do that I would like make sure I keep a bit more like of a healthy, balanced lifestyle and 
not just say sometimes I, I would fly to Canada just for, for one show and back I was like I will never do that again <laughs> <laughs> one time even I went to play in Santiago in Chile and I literally flew in played my show and flew back to Europe I'm like oh that's so that's a lot really not good for the environment and for your body <laughs> no 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 neither one I mean it sounds like you've learned maybe you've learned the power of saying no yeah exactly <laughs> And appreciating, obviously, the time at home um, and, yeah, with, like, you know, people that you care about, really, which, you know, would never have had to have, we would have never had that time, I should say, otherwise. So, yeah, I'll be a bit more maybe thoughtful into, like, choosing <laughs> how many shows it take on or when Absolutely. it all starts. <laughs> and it'll also offer you more time to work on music, right? Yeah, it's been, it's actually been really good for me because I, tried to actually get into more of like real like the technical side of like my production I think a lot more than when I would perhaps just like put things together and put, got more hardware actually as well and like oh, nice. really focused on that side of things and that can be quite challenging like timing everything right and recording in you know but yeah it's been good well <laughs> Well, now, I mean, now that you're moving, you have to like take your entire studio apart to take it across yeah. the, take it across the pond. What's that going to feel like? I know it's, but it's in a way like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm happy with it because I feel like I kind of came to an end of like an era here already. Like it's yeah. amazing, like where I am, it's like a bit of a community, but I was starting to really lose my, um, like my creative like vibe a little bit in, in the studio like, over the last few months. And I get that, I think, a lot. Like, I'm always a bit distracted or need to travel, not so much get up and move about so much, but it, I think it really helps than just being in the same space for such a long time. Yeah, so. absolutely. Having a change of scenery is really important. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, um, I'll just have to pack them all up and then set <laughs> <laughs> up somewhere else. But I think that will be, I'm excited to do that as well. What are you looking forward to most about moving? Um, I think just to be like for me, obviously, I'm growing. I grew up in Australia, and over the last six years, it's been like between um, so Germany and Spain a little bit, and yeah. it will be a lot more easier, I think, to be in an English speaking <laughs> country and people who get my silly jokes as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> and also just to go back to yeah, I don't know, a different culture as well. It always is nice. Yeah, for sure. Have you picked up a lot of German and Spanish in the last few years? <laughs> That's the thing. No, not really. <laughs> I always said, I was like, because if I wasn't like away, I'd probably just be sitting in my studio or maybe sitting with friends, like talking, like, yeah. <laughs> um, so I always like to, I always like to wrap things up on the question, what excites you about the future of dance music? I would like to see, um, like I, th I guess like people I don't know actually yeah it's like, like sorry let me rephrase that like looking back on what what has happened over the last year yeah and, like really appreciating um the events a lot more maybe making them a bit more special like in even like you know more intimate like shows maybe where it's I don't know like helping the environment a bit more yeah <laughs> well. um and seeing people come out of this so like positive and like with more maybe positive music as well not yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> is there do you do you think there's ways that you can like include that in in your own in like your, in your own life to help encourage people to do that I think so I mean I think the best way to do it is not like push it in people's face but just like like yeah small actions you can do it yeah yeah absolutely and, um, you know, whatever it might be, whatever it is that you you may be trying to like put the focus on, you know, you just every now and then just make a little post about it or do something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Help. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to me today. Yeah, of course. Thank you. It's been yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And um, good luck with your move. I actually just moved into the apartment I'm in right now. We had been oh, in our wow. last apartment for 10 years and it was, we didn't, we're not moving to a different country. We just moved like a mile and a half up the road. <laughs> but I, After 10 years, that's a long time. <laughs> it is. And like, I, I'm just, I, I want to empathize with you because I know how difficult moving can be and moving sucks. Um, yeah, really you know, does. <laughs> it does. It's not, it's not fun. It's 
it's great once you get to the place where you're at and everything yeah. settled in. So um, I want to like wish you the best in your move because you know you. I know how much <laughs> that how how awful it can be. Yeah, no, I'm actually I feel like I'm almost like a professional mover now. I I think I've moved about thirty or forty times. I've lost track and to various countries. So like <laughs> this time, I'm really just packing up my studio and I'm maybe one suitcase of clothes and I'm going to give everything else away. <laughs> That's a good, that's a good I'm policy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Might as well just get, get the stuff while you, when you get there. Right. Yeah. I think so. Start like a bit fresh. <laughs> yeah. That'll be nice. That'll be like the icing on the cake for having to deal with the awfulness of moving is being able to get yeah. a bunch of new stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and more equipment, more hardware. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you. All right. We'll see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. Bye. Bye bye.